Now, remember 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, when the John Birch Society, founded by Mr. Welsh, laid out basically everything that we've now seen unfold. You can see speeches he gave in the 50s that are like revelations or something coming true. I mean, it's, it's true providence that we had all these people inside the establishment, wealthy people mainly, who didn't want to sell America out, who were let in on the plan, military officers, you name it, were the people that led the fight uh, against what's happened, Barry Goldwater and many others. And then we saw, of course, people like Ron Paul in the th second and third waves, myself in the fourth wave. Now we see fifth and sixth wave people waking up to globalism. But now we've gone from denials of world government to world government being openly admitted across the board. So we have all of that taking place. And we have the TPP being, well, for a decade being prepared, but for two years being ratified, finally done on Monday, finally completed, and it takes WikiLeaks to release one section, the intellectual property rights chapter that was passed on the 5th that we still can't see. So they've now leaked it. We've been doing a quick analysis this morning. We have an article going up in mere minutes uh, by Kit Daniels. The TPP is just a global government takeover, which they now admit. Now, we're about to, because of TV satellites, have to stop skipping breaks. So by next week, I'm not going to do this anymore. These are network breaks, so I can skip them. They're not local breaks, but I'm going to skip this one so that Jasper has more time because this is so important. Um, William F. Jasper, of course, uh, his parents joined the John Bird Society back in the 60s. He didn't believe it. They were, you know, his dad was a World War II vet. He respected him, but he still just couldn't believe that there was this global government takeover, that Vietnam was wrong from a conservative perspective. He tried to disprove his parents, found out they were wrong, got involved in John Burr Society, and now for, I think it's a couple decades, has been the editor of the New American Magazine, reaching millions of people. Uh, they've made countless documentaries. They've traveled the country. They have youth organizations in the summer that educate uh, the children about what's happening and about the Constitution. My only criticism is they haven't been hardcore and aggressive enough, but that's okay. Their mission is just educational. Then it's up to the rest of us to be the shock troops. I've never been a part of the John Burr Society. My dad was involved in some of their activities when he was in high school. Uh, so obviously I've been heavily influenced by it. And he joins us now. I mean, William, we've gone from world government, them saying it's not coming, it doesn't exist, to exactly what the John Burr Society said 50 years ago, coming true this has really got to be a paradox for the establishment and how they're trying to navigate it, but they seem to be going back to the tried and trusted conspiracy theory label. I mean, Matt Drudge comes on and criticizes the TPP and Esquire and countless other publications say he's a conspiracy theory. So this really is the new way to say heretic, isn't it? I mean, this label, and then I want to get into TPP with you. Yeah, well, it's it's quite amazing that now after all these decades and years of denial, we are seeing exactly what uh, we had warned uh, coming true. The uh, uh, move towards world government is going at a, at a rapid gallop. Uh, we see now with the TPP, uh, something we've been uh, writing about and warning about for the last couple of years, uh, it seemed to be, it seemed to have gone away for a few months. It was not being uh, uh, headline news for a while, but we warned that, hey, it's, uh, there is still activity going on it, and this is going to be coming out back very soon. And of course, Monday, uh, it pops out, voila. Uh, it has been uh, adopted by the leaders of the TPP countries, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And this is a giant step toward uh, world government. Uh, this is taking NAFTA uh, global in the Pacific direction. And as you know, the uh, Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, the TTIP, is the companion treaty that is scheduled to take us global on the Atlantic side. And so joining the United States with the European Union. Uh, and in the midst of all of that, we see another very important uh, part of this whole scheme toward world government in the re so-called refugee crisis, which is really a migrant crisis. It includes refugees 
uh, streaming out of the uh, war-torn countries of the Middle East, which the United States and the European Union uh, countries under UN auspices have been obliterating and creating this huge migrant crisis. And now, now we're told as a result, uh, Europe has to take in millions of refugees and the United States as well. We have to take our share. And of course, this is part of the whole destabilization process. If you're going to deconstruct the current world and create your new world order, you have to create the kind of stability that will give a rational uh, explanation for what you're doing. And so that's what we see happening now with all of this migrant pr push. That's right. It's 21st Oregon. century warfare. And I want you to walk through all this. But in the past, if a company head or a governmental head screwed up big, they had to resign. Now when they, quote, screw up on 9-11 or screw up with the derivatives, they get rewarded with more power. So they bomb the countries. They bring in ISIS. They bring in Al-Qaeda. They bring in the refugees, a bunch of them, military people kicked out of Syria. And then now it's our job to pay for them and to take down our crosses and be politically correct. I mean, we really see the left in globalism teamed up with radical Islam. How do you see those things intersecting? Well, uh, they, they intersect uh, in many different places. And the current uh, issue of the New American Magazine, we have a package of cover stories by myself and my colleague, Alex Newman, whom you've had on uh, your show a number of times, uh, going through both the, the whole uh, genesis of this with the current wars that are ongoing in Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, uh, and how the administration and the globalists behind it, specifically the Council on Foreign Relations and other related organizations that have been planning these wars for a number of years, how they have actually planned to create the refugee crisis and then to exploit it. They know when they obliterate whole cities and regions and nations and make people homeless, and uh, terrorize them that they're going to try to go somewhere. And then they're there with the United Nations High Commission for Refugees to say, ah, it's time to go to Europe. We have all this set out for you there. You, you'll be welcomed there. And of course, when you're in those kind of conditions, uh, I mean, we can, uh, we can feel compassion for those people, and we should, and I do. Uh, but it's part of but a larger public program they call it a conspiracy theory but it's completely naked they admit they're doing this to get, have a radical transformation and a divide and conquer strategy well and we have many admissions as as we pointed out and i'm sure you have as well uh from vice president joe biden from the heads of the uh uh military branches that uh we are indeed arming and have been arming and aiding and training the top isis and al-qaeda leaders and the Al Nasser Front and other groups that are, we were supposed, they were supposed to be moderates and they've turned out to, gee, guess what? Uh, they're terrorists as well. So we created the, the jihadi network. We have created the, the uh, disruption of all the countries of the Middle East with our regime change program, our, our Arab Spring. And now the results, which we predicted, we said there would be millions of refugees from this, and that's exactly where we are today. We have millions of refugees. The United Nations says that there are over 50 million refugees now and over a billion displaced persons. Where are they all going to go? Can we accept all of them? Can Europe accept all of them without completely destroying the nation. And those are staggering numbers. And as we know from leaked summaries of the 28, 32, it, it varies the, the different sections as they've negotiated this in secret for years. The John Burr Society wrote decades ago how they would create regional boards like the EU, call them trade deals, and then all of a sudden you wake up and it's a dictatorship. Well, look at the EU now saying the answer to the migrant crisis and the problems and the derivatives is a super EU and getting rid of any national sovereignty. And even sports teams can't be German or French or Spanish or Portuguese or British. They've got to be like named after, you know, superheroes or something because even nationalism in a team is bad and xenophobic. I mean, this is such a cult 
of political correctness they've created, then they destroy regions, fold them in to super regions with Marshall plans, in their own words, modern Marshall plans of trillions they give themselves to go into these regions over the decades and, quote, repair the problem. I mean, you can really see how they've got to implode the world to, on its ashes, build this planetary tyranny. And the two are, are the TPP and the refugee crisis are intimately connected and a very good indication well, of Well, Borders that. is in there, as you know. It's all in there. Absolutely. And, and if you look at, one of the, at a number of the key people that are involved in both of these operations, one really stands out just recently, and that is Peter Sutherland. Oh, Peter yeah. Sutherland is international chairman of uh, Goldman Sachs, Bilderberg, uh, Trilateral Commission, former uh, EU commissioner. He's the one who helped uh, bring about the the whole uh, EU amalgamation. Recently, on September 30th, he was on a uh, global experts uh, program, a special event by the Council on Foreign Relations. You can go on the CFR.org now and watch this. September 30th, Peter Sutherland, uh, Mr. Internationalist, Mr. Globalist. Uh, and he was the main uh, speaker at the event, and he was call he was pointing out that this recent uh, refugee crisis uh, is uh, it was necessary that we begin compulsory quotas. Compulsory quotas are what now the the EU is demanding. Each each of its member states has to take X number of refugees, and if you read the fine print of their decision at the European Council, they say, but this can, be, uh, this can be adjusted upwards. So in other words, this initial 120,000 that they said would be taken from Italy and Greece, they said, well, that can, that can be uh, uh, jumped upwards at any point. And now, uh, the, uh, of course, Germany just overnight then went from saying they were going to take 800,000 to now a million five. So... Uh, and then it'll be three million, about, and then five million, and then ten million, and then checkmate. They can all vote to enslave the Germans. Sure, I, I mean, so uh, we see. It was Peter Sutherland also who last year uh, joined with the other EU heavyweight globalists in attacking Switzerland and blackmailing and terrorizing Switzerland. When little Switzerland said, "Hey, we don't want any more refugees. We're not going to take any more Muslims from the Middle East." And so all of the international uh, establishment came down on, on uh, Switzerland, as they're doing now against Hungary, against uh, Lithuania. That's against right. Stay there. One of the greatest minds when it comes to studying the globalists and finding them. William F. Jasper is our guest. The march. Simply put, we are facing private corporate world government that is usurping control of the planet through incremental private and public partnerships that is basically classical racketeering and fraud. And they make money and consolidate power at each phase of the takeover. And they implement and exacerbate crises. They write white papers on how they do it, how they fund all sides of a conflict, and then basically get the West to bail the country out or the region out, but you're not bailing them out. You're giving money to the globalist and backing it up with your taxes and your, and your military so they can then issue terms to the conquered country or region. And by the way, outside the U.S., this is all well known. One big trick of the globalists is, though, they act like it's an American empire. And the Council on Foreign Relations, the PNAC group, the big uh, think tanks say that so that we get the blame for the corrupt world government while we ourselves are being set up for a fall being put under debt, being deindustrialized, being demonized, being attacked. Because they're going to bring us out of the dollar age. The question is when. We are being set up big time. So I want to get William F. Jasper's take on where TPP goes, how we fight this, where he sees Russia in all this, and more. Then our London correspondent, Infowars.com uh, editor-at-large, Paul Joseph Watson, will be joining us in studio. Fourth hour will be hosted by David Knight, and we'll be covering Obama as he arrives in Roseburg to feed on the energy of the dead, even though the families have all said don't do it.
I was correct, and it's not seven of the ten families.